hardcore boxing fans out there, how you doing? Big P here, you know don't you, you know Because that's why you've tuned in I called one today I'm, uh, Thought I'd bring a flask today Come on Rocky, I've got you a penguin! We have a penguin each don't we, Rocky only eats mint ones I'm a bit of a, I'm a blue ribbon blue ribbon man myself, but Rocky won't eat them. Uh, I don't really know what to talk about today. There's no shows is there that are on to talk about, so it's just chatting bollocks, isn't it? Really? We're just bollocks chatters, aren't we? So let's see if we can hammer today and pull up on the bullshit. Because that's what we're fed, isn't it? Bullshit. Let me just get this on here. Uh, let's have a look. We made, I made a little list before I come out this morning. Here! Get here! Do you know if they had a little, they have a human world, don't we? In a dog world. If they had a dog world, my dog would be doing 15 years in Franklin. Callous Island going on about Kel Brook versus Eubank. God. What's all that about? Kel Brook against Eubank. Oh, Ke oh, Eubank against Beefy. What I didn't uh, shut this window. What I didn't hear Callum mention. What I didn't hear Callum mention was Liam Williams against Eubank. I didn't hear that. Is that because he's a Frank Warren fighter? On all roads are pointing towards Sky Sports dates. I never heard him get a mention or the, the kid Bentley. Do you know what I mean? Who's every, some people's fighter at year? Terry, one of Terry's fighters at year. I, I, I didn't. Uh, I didn't. I didn't hear him get a mention. Do you know what I mean? So I, I, I don't know what to make of it. I don't know. Oh, cold. I don't know. I just uh, Beefy Smith against Eubank. Me, yeah, I could see that. Can't see Cal Brook against Eubank. That's scraping barrel. That in it. I mean, Calla. What happened to you saying that it's end for Cal Brook? It's not end when you're involved, is it? Is it Calla? Come see me. You know what I mean? Chatting nonsense. But I think it's a good signing for Callis Island. It means it means Sky get to work with another promoter, and it fills out the dates for Eddie Earn. Because Eddie Earn can't fill the dates, can he? He can't fill it with that road to his got. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to say who just sent me this, right? I'm not going to say who just sent me this. But let me tell you this. I'll tell you this. God, I didn't put that one out. Let's have a look. Listen to this. <laughs> the whole industry has changed since uh, Frotch Groves too. Eddie is a money-making machine. Doesn't care about the sport itself. Boxing should be pure and real. Like in the 80s and the 90s. Uh, I agree with that. Boxing were 50-50 fights then. And pay-per-views made everybody greedy. Things like that. And basically, my, my mate goes on to say about scripts being wrote. I mean, I had a, I had a good one off one of my other pals today. Who, uh, I think he lives at, uh, is it Poole, Dorset or something? I don't know, somewhere down there. Uh, this is a good one, this this is a good one, this is a good one. I sent this to my circle this morning. Dillian Whitepool left this year, beef is being created. Raw beef, or is it intense beef, or is it just stewing meat from Aldi? Have you noticed, Russell, most fighters who fight the big Dos Femi seem to get two or three fights afterwards with Matchroom, Tackham, Parker, Povetkin. Eddie must slip them a few extra quid. 
and offer them a couple of fights afterwards to get these rematch clauses in when fighting Femi on mandatory defences. That's a very good point, that. Dylan will want two pay-per-view fights this year, possibly one next year, while Femi and Fury are tied up. Will be from these few here. Povetkin, Pulev, Parker, Chisora. Non-pay-per-view worthy in my mind, but they will be. It'll be Pulev, won't it? Nobody wants to see Chisora free, does it? I mean, that would be scrape it, bow. That would be like Kel Brook, Eubank, wouldn't it? Kel Brook, on any pay-per-view now, is pinching money for Kel Brook. He knows that. He knows that. He's just going to turn up. Take a loss, he's took three losses, we just take one more for millions of pounds. The the morals and scruples have gone out at window now, haven't they? And like I've just said, if anybody has got a problem with what I've said, anybody, boxing industry, boxing fans, you have to come see me, don't you? Or if you don't want to come see me, come and debate on my channel if you've got a problem. It's no good me having people on that are going to agree with me all the time. Come and have a debate with me. What about you, Matt the Casual? Uh, you've disappeared, haven't you, since I put it on you in an email. Matt the Casual, eh? Yorkshire lad living in Essex. Why don't you come on and let's see what you've got to say? Because you don't have much to say about say lately, do you? Eh? Hanging out of the back of Eduardo. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Matt the Casual, you need to make a comeback on, the, on, on Porky's Corner. But Kelbrook against Eubank, it's a dog with fleas, isn't it? So, Beefy against Eubank, I'm behind that one. I'm behind that one. Beefy's in shape, he's not shot to bits. And who's to say that Eubank might be more shot to bits than Beefy? He's had more fist, more fist, hasn't he? Than Beefy. So, or the bad about the same. Trish Dick, Trish, Trisha Dixon and Barry Hearn interview. Well, you've all seen it, haven't you? We've all seen the Trisha Dixon Barry Hearn interview. He says, Are you in Epstein's book? Blah de blah. And Barry's going, Yeah, well, I met him once, you know. And apparently he took low, about 3,000 people's names and he had, he had them all in this book and he used to go around taking people's names. What? And, and, and personal phone numbers? He used to take personal phone numbers as well, did he? Mobiles and house numbers and office numbers and all that. All five phone numbers. What Trisha Dixon failed to ask is well he's got your personal phone numbers in there how did he get them or did he ever phone you or did you phone him and when did you meet him did were you in the same room or did you shake hands what did you talk about what i mean it's all going to come out of full disclosure isn't it at Ghislaine maxwell's trial so for me i thought trisha dixon were weak were weak if you were in a comic you'd be walter soft in bino you know with dennis the menace pulling it on you every day so Trisha Dixon, crawl out the back of Barry Hearn's arsehole. But what I will finish up on is this Trisha Dixon. You've done 20 videos, Boxing Live Stories. How come Barry Hearn's is the only one that the comments section are turned off on? Why is that? Anybody allowed to comment? Nobody allowed to comment, Barry. Eh? What, what about, uh, sorry, Trisha, what about that? So, Barry Hearn. I'll have a Zoom, I'll have a Zoom interview with you, Barry. I've got nine or ten questions I want to ask you before I can put it to bed. So, because what I don't want is, I don't want another Jimmy Savile caper. Where people, Jimmy Savile went to his grave, somebody that were knighted and revered by all of us. I mean, I was even one of them who wrote to Jimmy Savile when I were, when I were, when I were a young kid. I used to do Jimmy Savile impressions at school. Honestly, and I were really good at good at them as well, but I don't do them nowadays because you get Mickey took out you, wouldn't you? But but uh, I just think that I, I want I want I want to see somebody prod in it, prod it. But who's asked Trisha Dixon to put that question to Barry though? Somebody has, haven't they? That's what I think. So at least he put it to him, so I give him a little bit of respect. But like Rob Tebbett, when he's had Eddie Hearn on hook, they soon back off, don't they? They soon back off. Worst case scenario is they throw you out of the office and you never speak again. So I thought you bottled it, Trish Dixon. I thought your arsehole fell out. Uh, Like I said, it's took two years for anybody to ask Barry Earn them questions. Let me just put each one a bit. You know what my dog wants me to do? Hey! 
I'm not going over there, I've got dirt. I've got the new shiners on, I'm not going over there, I've got sludge dirt. He wants me to go out there. He wants me to go out there and get sludged up. If I have to come in that field for you, I'll just drive into the middle of the field. So I've come in this. But, uh, defiant. I've got no time for de people that are defiant, especially dogs. Uh, yeah, it took two years for anybody to ask Barry Earn that question. Two years for mainstream media. But now it's in the mainstream media. More questions might pop up, but it won't be from Coogan, Cassius, Michelle, Joy Phelps, Rob Tebbert, or Danny Flex and will it, Danny? Hey, you lot have had two years to ask that, and it took somebody who was basically on outside, really, isn't it, doing something similar to what I'm doing. Oh, well, not as similar, but do it. He's on outside looking in, isn't it? And it's took him it's took two years for somebody to ask that question. But why can't the people that are there every day? Because they're frightened to death, because without what they're doing, what would they be doing in life? They're signing that doll, wouldn't they? So, we've covered that. Let's have a look what else we've got to cover. This is what I want to point out to you, right? You know, no, everybody's scared to death of the earning boxing industry, but the fans are not. I've been in, I've been, listen, I've been in arenas, right? And I, I, I know what happens. You know, you know when people walk into a, an arena, you know, whatever you show is, you get your people like, you know, Mick Whale, Pat Barrett, Peter Fury, Jimmy Tibbs, Martin Bowers, people like that, proper geezers. They walk into the arena, nobody says boo, do they? Eddie Hearn walks in, everybody goes, wanker, wanker, tosser, gives them it, don't they? point I want to make is that why are people scared to death to put it on these, these this shower? Why are people scared to death? Because all they're doing is lining the pockets. They're filling us full of crap with this Joshua Fury thing. I mean, Adam Smith's 90% common. It happens this year. Why would it happen this year if there's no fans? They've got to keep the narrative going. If it happens this year, I'll be shot. If it happens this year, I'll do a Jimmy Savile impersonation. I'll crush a grape. I don't see it happening this year, but they've got to keep the narrative going. If Joshua fights Fury, he gets took apart. He may never fight a second time. They know all this, the risk. They know these people are steeped in boxing history. Adam Smith knows this. Without Joshua, he could get... What if Fury injures him badly or bashes him up? Because he's pretty brave, Joshua, isn't he? What if Fury bashes him up? Do you know what I mean? He could bash his head in. Could bash him to bits, could smash him to bits, punch him upside down. There's no second fight then, and the old the old sky the old sky scenario it will be shot to bits then, won't it? It'll be shot to bits. Kids want dog. Hang on a minute. I'm sat waiting for dog. He's, he's gone AWOL. So I'm sat waiting for him. So I'm sending this voice text now, alright? So he'll turn up in a minute when he gets really cold. I'm warm as toast, but I can't see him. Maybe he's left home. Okay. I've got this video to do first. Uh, so, you know. There's no respect there from fans for Eddie Hearn. There's no respect he gets booed at every show. People put the brass neck on him. You're not going to budge him as an ice man. I haven't been able to budge him, have I? Since, since Carl Froch left him, and, and I know what went on, I, how it all petered out and that. Since then, I haven't been able to budge him. I've tried all sorts. The guy's an ice man. Because money is their god. Money's their god. So, but... You know, it's then I, I then I want to I want to talk about them tweets that Steffi Ball keeps putting out. People keep sending them. It's doing me head in really. Don't send me no more. So I'm starting to see him in my dreams. Might have to bash him up when I see him. Might have to pork him. Might have to pork his corner him. The point I want to make is if Terry Harper has a fart, 
Steffi Wolfields has to put it on Twitter, doesn't he? Terry's farted. Go on, Terry, that were a good lot, that were a long fart. Go on, keep it going. Move inside, Terry, with that next fart. Now, if Terry Harper farts, Steffi Ball puts it on Twitter. If Eddie Earn puts something out or does own, he retweets everything. He don't retweet anything Frank Warren. If Frank Warren puts something out, Steffi Ball don't retweet it, does it? Neither does Dave Cole, but they all retweet Eddie's stuff and that. That is a cult. That is a cult. Would Peter Fury be putting stuff like that out about Savannah Marshall? Hey. You know, it, it, the, the rimmings out of control. If this is the norm, what you've got to do to get in with these sort of people, what what next? What next is it? You know, you know. We all know, don't we? When when they ring up and offer Steffi Ball money, yes, yes, yes. He don't even say, "Oh, you have to get me a bit more money." Can you imagine him ringing Joe Gallagher up. He's always want to squeeze that little bit more out for his fighters. Steffi Ball's just glad to get on there, isn't he? But I want to see Steffi Ball putting stuff out about other fighters in his gym. If Jason Cunningham or Anthony Tomlinson fart, does he put that out? No, he doesn't, does he? It's all Terry Harper, isn't it? So, share the love, Steffi. Share the love before you meet your maker. And you know that is, don't you? Come see me, Steffi. Uh, Wilder, what next? What next for Wilder? I don't know what next for Wilder, to be honest. Uh, a fight would be a good start, wouldn't it? Just blow somebody away, like, somebody in the top 15, just to shake cobwebs off. That would be a good start, and then we can call for Fury third fight, when he's got, you know, two or three knockouts back on his record, and he's got his confidence built up. But he's not getting any younger, is he, Wilder? But, like I said, I see I see legal problems down the line with that. Uh, Boxing pundits on Sky, BT Sport, Dazon. Gareth Dave, Gareth A. Davis, he's never won a belt. He's a boxing analyst expert on Dazon. John Fury's never won a belt. The next ex journeyman that uh, been knocked out and has got one stoppage on his record in 13 fights. He's an expert analysis on on BT Sport. Well, that's just just Frank Warren, isn't it? Keeping Tyson happy, keeping John. Bringing him into the circle, keeping John on side. And the Dave Allen situation, Dave's very funny and that, and I've been in his company many, many times, and we, we used to have each other rolling all over the floor, you can imagine, can't you? But Dave's not going to come near me, is he? Because I'm outrageously outspoken, aren't I, and controversial. But Dave Allen's uh, come out and said, I don't train, I never took it serious, blah de blah, and never won a belt as well, but he's an expert analysis guy on Sky, so. I don't know, I mean, with Dave Allen on Sky the last few weeks, doing 300,000 views, talking about when he sparred people, is, is that where Sky's heading now? Is that, is that is that boxing, that, or is it pantomime? Is that WWE? I don't know. I've never won a belt, but my average is better than Dave and John's, isn't it? You know why? Because I've not been beat, have I? <laughs> so, but, it is what it is, isn't it? Good luck to them if they can figure a way around it, but is that social media to blame? I don't know. Getting back to uh, gyms that have been raided, Steffi Bull says his gym's been raided. Well, Mark Tibbs' gym were raided, but Mark Tibbs never put it on social media, did he? Police ran into the gym and Mark Tibbs were pissing his pants at them, but they said, oh, we've had a phone call. So, is this something that the police are doing? Just to just to have a nosy around people's gyms. I don't know. It's Steffi Bull's on on bail, isn't he? For serious charges, so they can come and do what they want any time. It's part of, part and parcel of the game, Steffi. You remember I told you that story about the day I got out of prison. Now, if you Google my name, Russell Hartley, and you go on Google, you'll see me getting bashed, to, smashed to pieces in back of a police car, teeth knocked out, and all sorts. And they give me pre month in prison and. After two weeks, 15 days to let me out, judge and chambers, and the following year I, I, I proved I were innocent. The camera in the police car weren't working, but luckily somebody filmed it. But the point I want to make is, Steffi, you run with the foxes, that, that's what happens. But Mark Tibbs didn't put it all over social media, did he? But Steffi Bull did, didn't he? He put it in Sun newspaper, talk sport, and that. But when Steffi got into trouble earlier last year for what he got into trouble for or what he's on bail for. He didn't want to put that on social media, did this Steffi? So works both ways. But Mark Tibbs didn't think I'm gonna put that on Twitter and get Billy Joe some PR. 
No, 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 because Mark Tibbs is not in the WWE business, is he? So, people keep asking me in emails and that, and I don't like to go off boxing topics, but every now and then we have to do because we're trying to sell the channel. Uh, people keep saying to me, Porky, I don't know what to do in lockdown. Your videos have saved my life. What else do you do in your spare time? Well, Carl Froch got me watching that Ozark. If you go onto Netflix, watch Ozark, it's called, and it's uh, a program about drug dealing and uh, money laundering and things like that and it's it's a cla it's a classic basically it's up there with Minder, The Sweeney, Dallas, Sopranos, Brotherhood have you seen Brotherhood? I've got Brotherhood that's fantastic uh, so it's up there with them oh that reminds me Mick Whale I found Brotherhood box set I'm gonna drop it off for you all right, Mick. So, Brotherhood. If you think Sopranos is good, you need to watch Brotherhood. It's old now, it's about 15 years old, I think. But I've been watching Top Boy. Top Boy, it's called. It's by Ashley Walters. I'm on to the second series now. I think that's really, really good. It's about uh, heroin and crack and cocaine business in London. It's really, really good. I can, I can lose me any program, programs like that. So, and I watched the program, I forgot what it's called, it's about the crack epidemic, it's on Netflix, about the crack epidemic in H's and showing you everything about what went on, how Americans were flying cocaine into the country and Nicaragua and all that and Sandinistas and all that, how Americans were allowing cocaine to come into the country in H's and Pablo Escobar and all that, all that carry on like, I, mean, it's, I think that's a really good program from Netflix, I'm a massive, massive Netflix fan. Uh, that's about it really, I've got something coming up in three or four weeks, uh, another production, it's involving me, uh, Jason Barker, Glyn Rhodes, Clinton Woods, uh, I'm taking a film crew up to Sheffield, so we're going to do that, set three cameras up, then we're going to jazz it up, It'd be, it'll take two days to do, probably take me a day to do a script, so that'll be three days, uh, I like to do a script day before we go up there, so we're going to do that, looking forward to that, uh, got a bit of funding for that, so that's good. Uh, that's about it really uh, I'm gonna be I think I'm gonna be doing some for boxing asylum called Porky's Grill this weekend that's just a, a five-minute thing uh, I'm doing that as a favor for them lads all you people who are tuning into boxing asylum tune in and donate a bit of money to them because them lads put the time in and, and effort every weekend and they have done they haven't just done it for like three years like me Coppers, King Coppers, hey, eh? unbelievable, Coppers in a black Peugeot, Jesus, can't even have a copper, uh, can't, even have, can't even have a copper, I think my dog might have left home, he's going to be sludged up to death when he gets in here, Ooh, I might put him in boot, so I'm going to do that for Asylum lads, people need to all you people who subscribe to my channel, subscribe to Boxing Asylum and listen to what they do. I thought it would be a bit long this weekend, but the Barry Jones thing were good. Which brings me to a point I want to make. Barry Jones, a world champion boxer, he don't know where his next bit of pundit work is coming from. Like I've just said to you there, Gareth A. Davis, Dazone, John Fury, BT Sport, Dave Allen on Sky, not got a belt between them. Barry Jones, world champion. He's a freelancer. Them others aren't, are they? I ain't got anything against the others, good luck to them if they can work their way in. But Barry Jones is not an arse licker, is he? You heard what he said about Eddie Earn at the beginning at Asylum, where, where you know, he don't believe anything that he's told, or did he say promoters? Don't quote me on that. He might have said he don't believe what promoters say. Well, I don't believe what promoters say. I never used to believe anything Dennis said about shows because you'd wait up, we're doing this, we're doing that, no, it never happened. It's just people, a lot of people chatting a load of shit. Don't mean to say Dennis doesn't know what he's on with and he hasn't got a good track record, but we're in the shit business at the moment. It's not the boxing business, it's the talking shit business dot com. I don't want to hear people who talk, chat shit in my company because they chat shit to Dennis and then they believe it but it doesn't happen down the line. There's always an angle. There's a method in people's madness, so I don't want to be part of people that chat shit. Because the promise, there's, listen, there's talkers, you know, don't you? There's prawn cocktail walkers. 
that's about it really uh, that's about it really keep the abuse coming somebody else deals with all that now keep it coming on comment section keep it coming on emails I deal with emails now Keep it coming on emails, porkycorn at mail.com. We're going nowhere. All your people who keep complaining about the Mickey Theo uh, videos. Mick wants to fight John Fury. If he wants to fight him, and come on my channel and talk about that. What am I doing wrong? You still get another 25 to 40 videos a month. So if you don't like them Mickey Theo videos, don't watch them. Do you know when? I go to buy my, my mate's a bit of a bit of a gimp. He looks like Bamba Gascoigne, 42 lives with his mammy. When I go to his house and he puts these gimp programs on from Gimpville Island, I, I went to school with him. I still go see him because he's a schoolmate I and mean, you don't cash your mates in here, but I'm like, what's this you're putting on here? And he's like, oh, I want to watch, let me just show you this porky. You show me your videos, I'll show you this. I'll go on then and I'll give him 10 minutes and that's it. I don't want to sit there an hour and a half watching a load of shit. I don't know you're watching, mate, but I don't. But you, sometimes you have to give a little bit of respect to people who put effort in, but I don't want to watch shit. And if I don't want to watch shit, I don't watch it. So if you don't want to watch it, don't watch it. Watch the other videos. Nobody's having a go at you. If you don't want to watch it, don't watch it. I'm not forcing you to watch it. But if you have a serious problem about it, come on the channel. If anybody's got a serious problem about it, come on the channel. There's 23 people being on the channel now, but... We get double that in death threats and violent stuff get, gets sent every day. Don't hide behind your camera. Come on the channel. Come on the channel. Let me get this rat in here. Rocky! Rocky! This is not good, this is it. This is not good at all. So that's about it really. Uh, we covered a few things today. I'll get Cameron to get this out tomorrow. So that'll be four that are in, in bank. It's all, all good stuff, isn't it? As long as I keep them churning out. Let's go over around, go around to the other entrance. It'd be like a drowned rat in this. What if he's left home, man? I'm gonna put this on with filth driving about. You're allowed out, aren't you, for a bit of exercise, aren't you? Yeah, once a day, innit? Yeah. But, uh, but yeah. It's one of them things, innit? If he's left home, I'm going to be in a rape. Two and eight, aren't I? I'm in a rape state, man. I'm starting to get a bit worried now. Let's have a look. No, it's uh, well, like I said, we can only we can only move forward, can't we? With what what we're doing? Everybody likes to have an opinion, don't we? In boxing, so we've all got an opinions, but not enough people, in my opinion, want to want to come out and say anything, do they? Because they're all frightened to death. It's like I keep noticing people keep asking, uh, you know, your cold wells and your. And your Steffi Bulls and, and, and people like that, you know, rimmers or rim Eddie Earn and don't wash them, don't clean the teeth after. People keep asking them who's going to win, Joshua or AJ. Sorry, Joshua or Fury. They keep saying the torn and all this, but I know deep down that the same that the same Fury's going to win. They don't come out with it, dare they? Only if Dave Caldwell's going to come out with the Dave Cor Caldwell Sunday sermon this Sunday if the fight gets made and says Fury wins. Dave. Come see me. Cause you know you won't. Because they don't want to rock the boat, do they? Do you know what I mean? They don't want to rock that boat and have an opinion. And, and we live in a democracy. So have an opinion. There's this dog, man. So, so that's that. It's not good at all, is it? It's not good at all not good at all. 
I don't know what to say really, to be honest. If I don't, if I don't find my dog, I'm going to be in bits, aren't I? I've nobody to sleep with. <laughs> I think I know where he might be. If I'd have had me wellies, I'd have been over in that field. Let's just get another spin back round and we'll fight him and find him. Uh, I think that's about it really. People keep asking me about that bridge of weight carry on, but I don't know what to make of it to be honest. I wonder if he's gone home. Go back and have a look. This is not good, this is it. Not good at all. Not good at all. <coughs> it's not like Rocky to miss out on a penguin as well. Usually wolves then. So, people keep saying to me, can Dylan White win a world title? No, he can't. He don't even win a European. Dylan White's just there for money, isn't he? He's not there for legacy. Them that blip, re, preach about legacy, no, they're there for money. Every fighter's there for money, but some of them, they're there for legacy. Because the money comes with the legacy. I'm in camp with Peter Fury, and I remember him talking to her. Yui about uh, money in boxing and belts and that and he just said Yui if you're good enough the money will come that's what he said to Yui before Parker fight if you're good enough the money will come Yui's last fight is Marius Vark the last fight that he won the last fight that Dylan White won was Marius Vark but have you noticed Dylan White does not call out Yui Fury don't even mention his name because he's sparred don't even mention his name because they've sparred together. You know what I mean? So I don't know what's happening there. Look at this here now. What's he think I'm gonna do now? Look at this here. It's a one laner mate. Leave me a tin opener to get out there next time. You were alright, weren't you? Bit of alright. So, let's see where that little sod is. Gotta be drowned right in this. I'm happy now, I'm happy now, I'm happy. Peace out, keep on trucking, keep supporting boxing. Get here you! <laughs> you liked that one, didn't you? Right, first of all, I just want to say thank you very much for liking and subscribing. It means a lot to me because uh, we're on this journey together aren't we so anybody got any ideas for the channel fire them over to me porkycorner at mail.com all right shout out to innovation alloys and south yorkshire packaging all right don't forget to subscribe keep on trucking <laughs>